Conserving the rocky deccan, does that surprise you? Well then, let's go to the dry scrub forests on the hillocks of Deccan, home to many little forms of life that are in grave danger. Let's see why and how we can protect them. The Deccan region in the western South India is an ecosystem made of large rocks. These rocks are millions of years old. There are stunted bushes among these rocks instead of tall green trees. And so, people often mistake this ecosystem to be a barren land and do not consider it worth conserving. They couldn't be more wrong. This area contains a lot of life in the moist patches under the rocks including a plethora of mosses, ferns, insects and reptiles. The hillocks house slender lorries, tree shrew, golden gecko, white napetite, painted spurfowl, the endemic cycads and possibly even the enigmatic Jordan scosa. In the ficus trees that grow here live many varieties of birds. But these life forms of Deccan are not as well known as the granite available in this region. This area is heavily mined for granite which is destroying the habitat. To add to this, climate change is affecting the temperatures and rainfall patterns here. Together, these are bound to affect the health of the many life forms in the Deccan. So, there is an urgent need to identify a flagship species which can be used to monitor the health of this entire area and help conserve it. What are flagship species and how do they help in conservation? Flagship species are iconic for a region, often attractive looking to catch people's attention. People build national parks and wildlife sanctuaries to help these organisms grow well. These efforts not only help the flagship species but also help the entire ecosystem of these areas. It benefits many other life forms that we might not even know about. Tigers, lions, snow leopards, pandas are some of the famous flagship species used for ecosystem conservation across India. So then, what could be an ideal flagship species for the Deccan? Dr. Karthikeyan Vasudevan, a wildlife scientist at the Laboratory for Conservation of Endangered Species at the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology suggests the yellow-throated bulbuls. These are not the regular bulbuls that you might see in your backyard. Dr. Vasudevan and his group study the ecosystem of these birds. These birds are found exclusively in the Rocky Deccan, Eastern and Western Ghats across five states of South India. Their habitats span 100 to 200 kilometers surrounded by plains or a few rocky clusters. Interestingly, yellow-throated bulbuls are found only on the hilly slopes and not sighted in the treeless plains interspersed among these slopes. Studies by Dr. Vasudevan's group show that yellow-throated bulbuls in different regions of South India have a lot of diversity in their genetic makeup. In order for this diversity to come about, yellow-throated bulbuls would have had to fly from one slope to another across the plains to mate. Their studies thus suggested that even though the slopes are the most preferred habitat for the yellow-throated bulbuls. The plains are equally important for their movement and healthy population. Dr. Vasudevan says, in order to monitor health of the Deccan ecosystem, we should monitor the numbers of yellow-throated bulbuls, especially of the adult populations and their genetic diversity over the coming years. So long as there is diversity in their genes, it means that the yellow-throated bulbuls of different regions are able to mate with each other. This in turn means that the slopes and plains of the Deccan are livable enough for not only the yellow-throated bulbuls but also the plethora of other life forms in the Deccan without actively monitoring them.